Hi. We are thrilled, beyond thrilled, to have Jennifer Finlayson Five on our show today, who is the Yay. renowned doctor. And you're not actually a sex therapist, but we call you the Mormon sex therapist. I think yes. everyone calls you the Mormon I sex therapist. I get called therapist. that. <laughs> yes. Very good family therapist, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm licensed as a prof uh, as a clinical professional counselor, but I've done all my training in family systems and sexuality and so on. So yeah. Wow. Well, and, and I was joking with her before I said, we call you the um, Mormon Oprah because you're so wise and have yeah. said things that were like, yes, oh my goodness. Like right. have changed the, uh, the conversation around sex for women in the mm. church, which I, mm -hmm. uh, I'm still thankful for. And so mm -hmm. today we are gonna talk to her about some LGBTQ issues. Yeah, well, so I just wanted to give some background. I met uh, Dr. Finlayson Fife at a retreat that I took my daughter to right after her mission, which was brave, but I felt like she really um, could benefit from kind of a reframing of her sexuality before she was out dating and getting ready That's to get smart. married. And I did ask her if I could say that um, <laughs> on the podcast. But um, as I listened to uh, Dr. Finlayson Fife, you can there call was me Jennifer. It's easier. <laughs> it's like a mouthful. I know, I know. <laughs> I'll be like tripping over everything. Um, Sound like me. Just, exactly. So there's just, uh, there was just such a, I love how Jennifer brings the gospel and the power from within us into the discussion about our sexuality and using it for goodness. And just as Jennifer, as Jenny and I have been working um, with different people on their issues, there are these mothers with issues with their children and trying to work through this, this, this sexual, this issue of sexuality is so prevalent that we thought this would be a perfect mm -hmm. fit mm -hmm. for Jennifer to kind of help us navigate these waters because they're tricky and there's uh, there are no signposts out. So we're on our own on this. And the more educated we get as moms about yeah. sexuality and all these things, I think the more tools we have to help our children. Absolutely. So let's yes. jump right in. Mm -hmm. And the very first thing we wanted to talk to about was sexuality 101 and what we know about LGBTQ issues, but particularly um, being gay mm -hmm. and, and how that there's not a, we're not, we don't have definitive answers, but what, can you give us kind of a 101 on that? Yeah. I mean, I don't have the statistics so freshly in my mind that mm -hmm. I can just get, but um, my husband and I actually went to a presentation last year by Bill Bradshaw. Um, mm -hmm. It was the Encircle Conference in Salt Lake because we yes. were in the area. And so, uh, so Bill's done a lot of really excellent research on, on um, LGBTQ uh, realities and what the biological basis is for them. And, you know, transgenderism from a biological perspective versus being gay or lesbian. Mm -hmm. And so I can't remember the specific numbers, but this, the, important piece is that, you know, I think it was maybe like six to 7% for gay men, it's biologically driven. He talked a lot about the way the brain, that the sex organs develop ahead of the brain development. And so there can be a split between how much of these sex determining hormones are in the system during different times um, within development. And so it can create more of a split in a sense between you know how one is attracted how one thinks about themselves identity versus biological organs hmm. and so he talked about some of these biological processes and why we have this variation in sexual orientation and gender identification and sort of the biological basis for it so it was very interesting research he was bill bradshaw for those who don't know is a byu professor mm -hmm. who was there when i was at byu and has a son who is gay yes. and so that started a lot of his research and thinking um, on the topic so he's a great resource among many others but we might, uh, but we the, might be able to link that i think i think yeah published that yeah uh, yeah, exactly. I think that would be. And and I think the important thing in just thinking about this is that, you know, if sexuality and sexual orientation were strictly a choice, you know, then then you can put it in the moral frame. Because right. if it's just about choosing, then then morality has a role within it. Right. But when it's more complex than that, and biology and disposition and so on are factors within our choosing 
Well, then the issues around choice and morality then are certainly impacted. If there's something you don't have control over, you can't be morally responsible for it. Correct. And so yeah. I think that's just a piece that. that sometimes we want to, in the in the discussion. I mean, I can appreciate why um, these issues create anxiety for all of us, really. I mean, I you know, I when I was at BYU, I had a cousin who I was quite close to, who was married, who started talking to me about the fact, I mean, he was talking to his wife about it as well, but that he had always been attracted to men and that he felt so broken and he felt so confused. And he was just, I, he sort of knew I was a therapist in training and he was just trying to get some wisdom on it. And I remember at the time, well, I loved him and I cared about him and I wanted to be a good source of wisdom or kind of just perspective in his life. And that it was really something that it just was complex. It made the world much more complex than I wanted it to be. I think that's how I would say it, you know, is that there wasn't an easy answer. And I, I couldn't in, at that time, there was more of thinking among regular Latter-day Saints that this is a choice and you shouldn't choose it. and even if it isn't a choice, you shouldn't choose it. <laughs> and, you know, right. there was just more, you know, I think fear of the topic. And uh, and so anyway, I guess what I'm trying to say is I can see why a lot of us don't like it because it complicates our picture of God's plan and how things should be. And yeah. so it can make it easy to have simple minded thinking about it as a way to make our own world more simple. Yeah, we like everything tied up with a bow. And this oh, is yes. tied up with a bow. Yeah. And, and if you don't have a child who's gay, well, then it's much easier to tie up everybody else's world with a bow, you right. know, because you don't have to deal with, wait a minute, this is my child whom I love and who I know and who's good. You know, that, that pulls in a whole different direction. Well, and if you think about, you know, just the pure process of making a child and all the different characteristics that are come into play, like, I, I mean, I've got a to a girlfriend who's not very tall, her husband's not very tall, her son's like six, seven. Mm, yeah. I mean, like we've got, you've got right. a lot and nobody questions that. That's right. The, the you know, variety of eye color, or hair color, or curl or not mm -hmm. curl. But when it comes to sexuality and the variation, we don't look at it as God's great creation. That's right. Like, you know, or God, God's right. variety. We, look we at see it, it as, well, many of us can think of it as a defect in some yeah, way or something yeah, went which wrong. Is bad, which it, yes. is, is it true? To, like, I was talking to Allison about this and tell me if my take's right. It's like, I view sexuality as like, almost like hair color, like even heterosexual, homosexual, yes. all, there's so much spectrum, right? That's yeah. right. Absolutely. And so there is this, there, I can't remember the person who created this model, but it was the spectrum of heterosexuality to homosexuality and that human beings are somewhere on this spectrum. Mm -hmm. like, it might have been Kinsey, actually. Kinsey. It may have been Kinsey. Yeah, that would yeah. be pretty progressive thinking at the time. And yeah. then also how sexual, asexuality to hypersexuality. Mm -hmm. And so I actually heard this presentation at BYU years ago, but it was basically looking at, you know, the more extreme you are, the less the sense of choice. That is to say, if you're not that sexual, uh, you may not, this may not be a big issue for you, even if you identify more with the same sex than the opposite sex, right. but the more sexuality matters to you and to your, your sense of self and kind of your values and desires, then the more this, this matters for sort of self-defining and one's happiness in life. Right. Well, and um, with that, let's talk about, so a lot of parents say to me, and uh, there's a conversation in the, the church that says, Everybody is under the law of chastity, um, both, you know, gay and straight. So, mm -hmm. but it's not really the same for, mm -hmm. for gay people, right? We ask them to not have sexual relationships. So let's just talk about the differences between celibacy and ch what chastity as we know it in our mm -hmm. gospel. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I think of chastity differently than celibacy. I mean, I, just to start with, I think of chastity as more of a way of being, like mm -hmm. a purity of heart. Um, right. A lot of times we conflate this idea that sexuality, we have a lot of conflations in our narratives, in my opinion, around sexuality because we fear sexuality and we think of sexuality as sort of Satan's pathway to, you know, a kind of indulgence and destructiveness just in general we do. So we 
sometimes I think people think of chastity as pure, as in untouched by sexuality. Like that sexuality becomes this sort of reality that makes us less innocent, less pure, and so on. And I think that of chastity is more about purity of heart, that we're, we're in relationship to our sexuality and to others in a way that is, has integrity in it, that is good for us and good for anyone that we're in relationship with, that we're creating goodness through our sexuality. So then if you think of chastity from that frame, chastity is a way of being in relationship to your sexuality. I mean, you have to really think about what you mean by that, because a lot of people think that then means you, you know, you can't have passion and you can't, you, you, you know, you have to kind yeah. of strip yourself of this. And that's not at all what I mean at all. Um, no, because I think passion is goodness. <laughs> it is goodness. It's a hundred percent goodness. It's part of joy. It's part of spirituality. It's part, it's part of um, experiencing a transcendence and oneness with the divine, with your beloved, with yourself. It's, it's really where so much beauty lies. And, and so many of us are so terrified of sexuality or think of it as this indulgent reality that we never come to know and experience what intimate sexuality can in fact be. So I think that a lot of times we, at least I, you know, I've heard growing up and thinking about these things a lot, a lot of the kind of narratives that culturally that have been taken on, we're definitely progressing as a church community, which I'm really grateful for. But when I was growing up, I heard a lot of people say, well, people that, you know, if you're gay, lesbian, you just, just don't have sex, like singles in the church, you just don't shouldn't do well. it. Right. And that if you're single, you're not going to have sex. And why are people hypervaluing sexuality so much? Okay. And I understand partly because we're in a society that really values sexual expression and there is a kind of focus on sexuality in our larger culture that hasn't been there before. So I do appreciate that if this is just about sexual pleasure. But the thing is, when we think about getting married, we're not just thinking about sexual pleasure. <laughs> we're thinking about having a special person in our life. We're thinking about loving and being loved, being able to express our sexuality with a very special person in our life. And so even if you're single, you're, there is the hope and anticipation that you will find that special person with whom you can be sexual. And even for a single person, how to say it, it's not really about marriage. It's about I mean, how to say it, it's about finding the special person that you want yeah. to be married to. And yeah. so that is to say, you may not have control over whether or not you find that special person that you want that strong commitment with, but there's still the hope. Yeah. And, and I think we view them like they're on the right path, right? That they're yeah. That, that they want that, that they, exactly. And it's a fully legitimate path to be on that they're looking for the right person in their life or the person that they really want to commit to. I think if you're gay, you don't have, and in active in the church and trying to abide that, there is this sense you don't get to have someone special in your life. Yeah. I mean, you don't really get to pair bond. You don't get to do, all of us want someone special. And, um, you know, there may be a few people out there who don't want to pair bond, but that's not defined by sexual orientation. Right. And so I think to rob our kids of that possibility is a really big ask. I think it's one we have to really think through carefully because if it's just about sexual indulgence, you know, I don't want any of my kids to do that, <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, okay. straight or gay, you know, I don't, right. I don't think that's good for human beings in general. And so, but if we're saying it's because of your orientation, um, then I think we have to really think about if that's the right thing to ask. Right. Well, right. And, you know, someone that might be single still dates and can hold hands and kiss and cuddle and make out and do all those fun things that. Yes, you know, are do. a part so, of. Yes. Yeah. And those are important parts of of life. Those are. That's like yes, and they're important of parts of exactly one of the things I talk about in some of my courses is and especially the how to talk to your kids about sex course is the fact, you know, a lot of times when our kids hit puberty and start having sexual feelings, we get worried, like, 
something's going wrong, you know? Right. <laughs> and I'm like, no, something's going right. This is absolutely necessary. Is yes. Right, it's how your body's made. But also just the sexual energy itself is a part of psychological maturation and right. having a direction for that sexual energy. I remember my son was taking piano lessons. It's always hard to get him to practice. He's like 13 or 14 and he meets a girl who learns that he can play the piano and that he knows a Bruno Mars song. And oh, so yeah. he comes home and he's just like practicing, practicing like <laughs> all night long. <laughs> that was such good luck for you. I know. <laughs> Gosh. But this, that's so what my true. question is like when we ask this ask, what damage are we really doing to? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think what, what are they supposed to sublimate that? with like what are they supposed to swap it with because because we're taking right so there's two different things because if there really is a legitimate path I remember saying to my roommate because when I was back discussing some of these ideas with her back when I was in grad school and she was taking the position of you know it's just a sacrifice but and you know we love them and I'm like but that's not good enough I mean what exactly are we going to offer as an alternative because if you have to say, if you're really going to make that ask, you have to really think about what it would be like to be in this person's shoes. And do they have a legitimate path? Because at that time, it was like, sort of don't ask, don't tell, just right. don't talk about it. And, and, um, you know, if, if like in some religious traditions, there was a way to choose celibacy and have a kind of what's the word, esteemed role within the faith community, you know, seeing it as an actual sacrifice, meaning there, you still, I'm not saying that I would want that life. I think that would still be very hard, but you could choose it and have an esteemed role. You could see it as a gift from God because you had another purpose. Um, And so it gives you a real direction. I think in our current framing, or I, I know we're continuing to do better with it, but I think that the damage can be that, well, there's something broken about you and there really is no legitimate path except to kind of stay thwarted in your sexual and emotional development. Which is a a real immaturity, really. It's a real cost both to a person and to a community, in my opinion. Right. Because you don't then get to, it's very difficult, I think, to grow into full adulthood without also being able to grow in your sexuality and your ability to love and be loved. I mean, I talk in my my Strengthening Your Relationship course about the fact that marriage is a divine institution because it pressures our emotional and spiritual development. This process of being in intimate relationship is, is a driver of development. Mm-hmm. You learn how to love. I mean, if you're, you, you can just resent it and not learn anything from it. And lots of people do that. But I mean, if you're using the pressure points to see yourself more clearly, to grow into a kinder, more flexible person, to grow in your sexual development, to be somebody more capable of knowing and being known through your sexuality, you, you create really refined people. <laughs> you, do, yeah, you create but- stronger, better people. It's an important process. And we teach that in the church all the time. But if we rob our gay kids from that possibility and then say they don't get to have it because because they're having the wrong kind of sex, I I think I don't think that's a service to any of us, especially to them. Right. And, you know, I mean, I I don't know. I think that we're afraid if you're heterosexual, there can be a real fear of homosexuality because it's been culturally so linked to ideas like being pedophiles and being yeah. aberrant and 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 then I think because we've not done a good job of offering full acceptance to our uh, gay and lesbian kids, I, 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 LGBTQ kids, <laughs> it's just like such a mouthful. But you know, to, <laughs> um, that you know, then I think there sometimes has been less healthy behavior in, in the beginning of some of their forays into dating and so on because they feel rejected sometimes or they're entering that late in in you know that their emotional development hasn't caught up given some of the challenges around identity and so on but but if we really offer our kids a legitimate place well then they can abide the same rules and they can also ask of themselves to be loving and careful and respectful and in the same way we would ask um, our straight kids so Right, and we talked about this before you jumped on, Jenny, but I've had this idea, like trying to explain to your family, having a sex talk 
And one day, years ago, we locked, we were driving from California and put on uh, Jennifer's tapes about, not a tape. How to her, talk to your, her, yeah. The, uh -huh. Yeah, her course on how to talk I to your kids kids. in the car. Yes, and they still tease us for locking us in the car and making That's it a great way. <laughs> oh, like the family joke. They're all grown. Yeah. And, but they love that. I mean, they loved it and they hate, they hated it. Like and they have to at least now. act like they hate it. They can't say um, they love it. <laughs> but um well, yeah, so what would, how would you recommend? Well, to but, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, but to have your kids sitting in front of you and have this conversation about sex and then to look at one child and say, actually, you, this doesn't apply to you ever. Mm -hmm. Like this, all of this goodness that dad and I are telling these kids about, it doesn't work. You can't have it. Mm -hmm. I mean, essentially is what we're asking parents to do, which is against all parent instincts. Mm -hmm. Because as it's a parent, as a parent, you want your kids to be healthy in a healthy relationship, to find love and to be refined by, like you said, like by the relationship refined you. I mean, you have to sacrifice for someone else. You cannot have life the rest, you know, the way you want the rest mm -hmm. of your life. You have to sacrifice and give and love. Yeah. That's so important. And this is and not I, one of those things that you can fake it till you make it. I mean, yeah. I've had a marriage in my family, two marriages in my family that involve um, a homosexual partner that, and because you just cannot cleave without that desire you know yeah, that's right that's so, right yeah so what would you recommend to moms if they're like have have both in their family or yeah. what would you say just tell them your gay kids well, one of the things I talk about in the How to Talk to Your Kids About Sex course is that love has to lead the way around this. I mean, we're in uncharted territory, not fully uncharted, but, you know, largely. And I work with lots of families where the parents love the gospel and they love their kids. Mm -hmm. And both are true. And they know the truthfulness that's in the gospel, but they also know there's something awry in this idea and the, their love and knowledge of their child pressures them to sometimes approach it from, I don't know what's best yet. I don't know, but I love you and we can figure this out together. And um, a lot of parents starting from that frame of like, I love you and we can pray about it and think about it and be wise about it. Um, I worked with one family where their son, it was very clear he was gay. Parents, you know, had served in the church all their lives, wonderful people. And their son was just too afraid to admit it, but he was getting suicidal and depressed and really struggling. And, um, you know, the parents led the way for him where um, they just were, they would talk to him and say, I think he was so terrified to kind of claim the reality because he thought he'd lose all of his community yeah. and yeah. he'd lose the gospel and he didn't want to lose either. And, and yet there was this big part of himself that he couldn't make go away. He couldn't pray it away. Mm -hmm. And so his parents out of their love for them, I mean, they had never thought about these issues. It's not like they had, you know, um, it was more knowing their son that pressured them to say, you deserve to thrive and you deserve to love someone and do it responsibly and, and find a good person in your life. And you can have the gospel and have this and we back you up. And yeah. I mean, what a lucky child. I mean, really, to have that kind of clarity from his parents, which, you know, takes some courage. But but I think, you know, the 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 idea that for me is so clear it's in it's so much in the, it's in the old testament it's in the new testament but but this idea that love is the highest commandment and this love of god self and other is more important than the, the specifics the details right. are there to point us to that and if we're and christ was very clear about this if we're using the details and the rules and our current understanding which we've also been counseled against right don't take our current understanding and and slam the door on future light and knowledge but if you take the ideal of love as your as your guide it will help you sort out what's true if we use love as our guide we will continue to evolve as a faith as families as parents, as couples, you have to think about is what I'm doing creating me cl 
uh, bringing me closer to God and what is good, or is it leading me farther from it? Right. Is it allowing me a deeper sense of organization and integrity and solidness and clarity, or is it leading me away from it? And, you know, a lot of us in the name of righteousness would rather reject our children and say, we stand up for goodness because it's easier because then you can just take a position that reinforces what's comfortable for you, but reject the one that you have a deep responsibility to. Right. You know, and you know, and most parents to... don't do that, but some sometimes people do do that. They'll do it in marriages. I'd rather reject you and what you care about than be uncomfortable and grow myself up to really know you and to deal with how you're different from me. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the measure of love. Well, and that brings up such a good point, because if we do that, if we reject our child, and if we just shut the door on that, like, Mm. you're, this is what you're doing is bad. Where do they go? And to whom, to to whom do they turn for this, for what they need? I mean, no, it's, it's very sinful, in my opinion, to do that to your child. And and church leaders have been very clear about that. But when you shut them off, you, you actually first of all, you're making a hypocrisy of your faith. Right. Okay. So they, they will reject it because they don't, because they're angry about the fact that you're using faith to reject them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Our, our um, religion of family and there yeah. we are not. Yeah. Our right. right. So, I mean, there's just no chance of them having that as an anchor point in their lives. Um, then you're saying, you know, not only do you not get to have us or the faith community, but you're out on your own. Well, then there's all kinds of vulnerabilities. And I've worked with some clients in that position where their families have fully rejected them. Mm -hmm. And then seeing them go and make pretty um, risky choices for themselves. And really, if they hadn't been driven out into the cold, they wouldn't have been so um, vulnerable to kind of self-harming behaviors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, 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 I didn't mention this at the beginning for you, Jennifer, but my brother was gay mm. and um, in, in a time that was hard, he's older than all of us and he would have been older yeah. than all of us. And his, um, his behavior was it, what he did to kind of compensate for all of these feelings mm. that he couldn't deal with, even though my parents were open and accepting the pressures from the outside caused some right. serious problems oh absolutely and, and he hurt people in yeah in that. yes he was yes damaged. yeah he got damaged so he damaged people. he was so damaged yeah. in and yeah that taking his own life i mean he was that oh. damaged and his so hard so hard and that informs me like that that path is not that's not goodness there's there wasn't goodness yes. and there wasn't any goodness for him to grab onto even yeah. right um, and that's Right. And I love how you phrase, right. um, phrase it, grow yourself up, because yeah. that's kind of our whole thing is like, we feel like having a gay sh- child really was God's opportunity to say, grow yourself up. Yeah. And I love the story you said of that family of leading the way with love because it is unknown. And so yes. it is like going in it together. And it's like, when you have the opportunity to have a gay child, you really do change. And it is your opportunity to co-parent. Absolutely. With yeah, because well, absolutely. And know more about God through it. You know, I yes. mean, I mean, my children have taught me more than I've taught them. And I know it's super cliche to say things like that, but it's hundred percent true. I mean, okay, maybe I've taught them as much as they've taught me, but I have learned so much from raising three very different children, one of whom has special needs, but they're just all very unique and they have gifts and challenges, each one of them. And you learn a lot about what it is to love someone. You learn a lot about what it is to see yourself through their eyes, which isn't always a pretty picture and pushes right. you to grow up. And what does this child need? Maybe different from what this child needs. And how do you become within yourself a person who can be a resource as they navigate their way in a complex world and live a moral life. I mean, that's what we hope for, for our children right? and have their own relationship with God and that they are in a relationship with what is true and good and right for them. And we're teaching them 
we have these guidelines. They're pretty good guidelines, but they aren't always the right thing for you. And so you need to also create this individual relationship with God, with your integrity, and daring to fulfill the measure of your creation, right? To become the person you were designed to be and bless the world through it. And that's a scary process. I think that's pretty scary for most of us, actually, um, to be really true to the gifts that we have, because if we are, we will have the richest, most um, high capacity society if we would do that, because we would take the gifts we've been given and express goodness through them in our unique ways. But because there's so much pressure on conformity as yeah. a way of managing our own anxieties individually, that we will pressure other people to be like us or make choices like us, that we then suppress so much intelligence, so much capacity, so much uniqueness, that Wait. that's really what Zion is, is to thrive in that way. And as we become more capable of love, we will thrive more collectively because we will allow more room for our individuality that can be expressed in a way that blesses the group, right? Not an individuality that hurts others in the group, yeah. I, I like where you talk about the suppressing and the design to be, who you're designed to be. Yeah, I mean, it just right. does not just have like the uniqueness of each of us in there, in that yeah. like statement, but you talk yeah. about suppressing. And one of the things that I feel like that I had to do in this process was the, the messages that I got were suppressing my, my, my gift of being a mother yeah. and knowing that child mm -hmm. suppressed it. And it pushed, you know, I was second yes. guessing myself. And there was a moment in all of this where I said, like, I've got it, you know, and I know that, that I was receiving intel information all the time from the spirit about how to raise this child, what to say at the right moment. Mm. But I suppress, you start suppressing because of the kind of the message coming in. And mm -hmm. that's what's so important. That's what we need parents right. to do is this is a direct line to God. Don't let anybody get in right. the way of that. Take everything you've learned as information and then take it to God. And, and we, that is so much a part of our faith, but yeah. because we're afraid, we often deny that reality. Yes. You know, I, you know, I, I, I know, you know, just given a lot of the work I do, I had struggles with women's position in the church and, sure. and, and I really struggled with God around those things. And, and I really was given a message of, it is your job to struggle with these things and to discern and to stand up for what you feel is right. And I was afraid of that answer. I, I, yes. I knew it was divine because I didn't want that answer. Yeah. <laughs> what I wanted was, yeah. don't worry yeah. your pretty little head about this. It's yeah. all good. Just follow because I that's where you're going to, yeah, you're just going to okay. get, you're going to get the validation of the group that I, and I like to be liked and I like yeah. people to feel good about me. And yet I knew if I really were to live more honestly and to challenge what felt wrong to me, that it would be challenging to some people, you know, people that I, it, it's not such a big deal now, but back then we were really given lots of clear messages about how to be a woman and so on. And so sure. anyway, but I, my point is that's that, scary that's because you, point. you risk the invalidation in the process of standing for what is true and what, or at least what you feel genuinely to be true and be right. Even if you don't have it all figured out, that you're continuing to stand up earnestly and honestly for what you think is more right. And that develops us as individuals and it develops us as a collective. So it is our calling to do this and, and to be in that reflexive relationship between our integrity and the rules. I mean, the rules are guidelines, they're good guideposts, they can be helpful to us, but we, if we make them the way to live, well, then we handicap our development, our spiritual and our relational development. And it's very important we don't do that. And that's very much in our gospel, that reality that we are growing into more godly people. And the way you do that is through conscience and a relationship with the divine, not just rule following. Yeah, well, I mean, like Joseph Smith, like, I mean, yeah. the easiest answer he would have gotten is go to Pastor Joe down the street. That's the right. church, right? That's right. Because so this is exactly how our church was 
found it. Yeah, right? and if he had, if you know, he got some ideas that were just radical in the, at the time. Had he said, "I can't share those with anybody," which is what right. I think we do as mothers of gay children who know, and and as women with our right. own kind of standing, well, think we would have stunted. We would have suppressed that he, if he would have suppressed that, you know, the ramifications so, of that. Yeah, we're so afraid not to be um, in the group, right? It's yeah. just that mm-hmm. humanness. Well, Mm-hmm. And one so of the right. things is a problem right now is I think people think that speaking about gay issues, LGBTQ issues, um, and having a different opinion than the doctrine is, um, a, you know, you'd lose your temple recommend or you'd be, you know, you're, mm-hmm. you're leaving the church and, and that's not true. And I think yeah. Elder Kostropperson stated that plainly, yes. Yes. pulling people out of the church that yes. is the problem. Not you yep. wrestling, like you said, yes. with the divine. Yes, that's, that's right. That's where, I that's mean. That's our divine I, calling yeah, to do that. And, mm-hmm. and my study for LGBT, like getting through all of this has been Eve, mother in heaven, and women in the church. Yeah. That's what informed all of this, which doesn't make sense. But it, I learned through the, stu- the same stu- study of women. Yes. Purpose. And I just. Think, well, and I have to say, you know, there's just. I have to say in the work I've done and the people I've worked with in my counseling and coaching and the, the women, the mothers, I know I'm going to sound cliche again, but it's really true. The mothers of, of LGBTQ kids, like there's just so much courage and strength there. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that it's right what you're saying yeah. about that this is their calling in a sense, this is their child, their beloved you know, they're not going to betray that. Um, but you see the tremendous strength that's in so many of these women who love God and love their child and they're really in that central struggle in a really meaningful and powerful way. Right. Emotional. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's every they're, they're, yeah, they're not trying to be like adversarial. They're no. trying to figure this out because we've That's been right. given something, a piece that of the puzzle that doesn't make sense yet. Yep. Yeah. And exactly. we're and and it's because we have that puzzle piece and we love that puzzle piece, we've got to figure this out. And it, That's right. uh, I believe it's it's the mothers who will make yes. changes in this. The yes. strength of the mothers supporting their sweet children. And That's right. Know. Yeah, yep. the mothers who know, that we know yes. in this. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I, That's I love right. this. And I love how you talked about, because um, we want to be able to teach moms how to have a healthy sexuality. And I love what you say um, mm-hmm. about just working with the child. Mm-hmm. We tell our son, we expect the same things out of you as we did before. Yeah. You know? But I right. like what you said, the mother right. has to have a healthy sexuality. So if you have, not to pimp your classes, yeah. but <laughs> I've done, oh. I've done, they're yeah, online okay. and they're both amazing courses. Like if you have not, that would be the best Christmas gift to go get for you is to go Absolutely. get those classes. They're easy. They're, she's delightful to watch and they're just, they're amazing. So yeah, if you could it's, clean up your sexuality and how your feelings about it, you're going to be such a better yeah. resource for your child. Right. That's really That's true, honestly, true. because what, when you start, because if you think of sex as something dangerous, if you think of something you don't identify with at all, well, it might be easier to ask your child to do the same because you're like, I'm, you know, it's not that great anyway, <laughs> right? right? But if you really then start to understand how central it is to your strength, to your sense of self, to joy in your life, to being able to f- be fully at ease and at peace in your own body and mind, well, then you also have the clarity about what sexuality can be, and you can be a much better guide to your children. Yeah. You know, a lot of young adults I've worked with who you'd say their parents said things like, you know, wait till you get married, but the parents hate sex. So it's like, it seems like a kind of counterfeit offer like, no, thanks. because like, I don't, you know, that doesn't no. sound so compelling to me. And so, <laughs> and so you want to, the more you've worked out these pieces, the more you're in a position to really offer a kind of scaffolding to your children who need it, who need a, who need a better way, because there's a lot of poor messaging outside of, of the church and, and you need something that really gives them a moral path to live a full life. How do they find your uh, courses, Jennifer? What'd you say? How do they find your courses? If they go to my website, which is just my name, finlayson-fife.com, 
Um, you'll see everything there and it is actually a Christmas sale right now for 20% off all the courses. So it's just until I think the day after Christmas is when it ends. So, so yeah, I don't know if this will post before then, but yeah. Well, we can try and get it off. Like your ending advice for mothers who are in the middle of this, like Allison and I, we both have a 21 and 23 year old boy who are dating. And what would you say? What would you do? Well, I would say a few things. I would say if you're feeling overwhelmed and afraid and anxious, if it's like new information and you're feeling af afraid, I would first say that that's normal because you're up against a reality that you feel unprepared for and insufficient for. Mm -hmm. And in some ways, I'd say that's true. <laughs> I mean, that is to say, <laughs> like all of us, li life hands you yeah. something that you weren't planning on and that you don't yet know how to respond to. And it, to, it's normal to have some of those feelings of dread or fear but in time, you can come to a place of a decision of, am I going to use this to grow and be a good parent to my child, or am I going to walk away? And I think this is on some level to just reject or simplify. And that's a really, really important decision point and a really important uh, in terms of your faith and your responsibility to love, right? And so is if you choose to walk towards it and you're afraid, that's also normal. That's what faith is. And I think to trust many things, one is that love's the most important thing and to start praying and um, seeking to know what that is and seek to understand your child better. How do they think? What matters to them? What are they afraid of? What do they feel they need help with? How do they feel about themselves? Does their difficulty with their feelings about themselves, if they are having that, have anything to do with you or how you've tended to talk about these issues in the past? Or is there something you can do to offer better for them um, relative to your own perspective? Also trusting not just that God cares and God is there as a resource, but there are many good people in the church who are there as resources as well. And so, of course, your program, there's uh, the, what, what you guys are offering and also the Mama Dragons and I can't think of all of them right now, but there's a lot of exceptional people who care very much about our LGBTQ kids. And so they're also a resource of wisdom and clarity. And, um, and to just trust in and in some ways embrace the growth process, even though it hurts. <laughs> it hurts at first. Yes. But once you get through that, well, then you see the joy and the beauty in it. Yeah. And, you know, I, I felt a lot of these feelings when I, my child was diagnosed with autism of overwhelm, fear, like, you know, am I going to be okay? And then a certain decision point, like I'm bringing my best to this mm -hmm. and all the ways that I grew as a person and a parent, just to understand life and understand what it means to love and understand what I don't have control over versus what I do but he's now 21 and just such a gift really to have him to be able to be his parent he's such a remarkable human being and um, i've really truly learned so much about what it is to be in this planet through the gifts that he has yeah amen amen that. yeah and and lucky us that we get to learn these lessons yeah. yes and have the blessings Lucky it's, us. it's so true. I got trust it is so true. Yeah. yeah, I I feel I feel lucky all the time. Thank you yes. so much for Thank helping you. us through this. This is like, this is this the hardest of all hard this um, this particular issue. And we are so grateful for your wisdom and for the study that you did to get you. Yeah, where you can help all us with that. Yeah. Thank yeah, you, you're you're wrestling. I think. Yeah. I've, goodness for all of us thank you so yeah much. that's right and I'll say one last thing about that yeah. I used to feel like that meant something was wrong with me that I struggled with these questions I, mm -hmm. I was in the MTC and everybody just had everything down pat and I'm like oh I'm trying to figure this out what's the matter with me like and it took me a while and I, I'd say I didn't even fully get it then I think looking back I'm just so grateful because I feel like it allowed me to really 
come to know what God and goodness is and a clearer picture of what's true and more internal freedom within myself. Mm -hmm. So fully worth that struggle, even though I didn't value it at the moment. <laughs> I, I totally, I agree. Journey. Yes, it I is. Agree. And it's, it's worth every like mm -hmm. crying headache that you're going to end mm -hmm. up with and mm -hmm. like sleepless yes. night. It really is. Yeah. worth. It. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it, it, it is. It's a, it's a gift. Thank you yes. so much. You. My pleasure. Thanks so for having me. To talk to you. Absolutely. Thank you.